Hi, friends. Welcome to another monthly favors that I must say a little more timely than the last two favors I filmed. July was an interesting month, not makeup heavy, but enlightenment heavy and I'll get into that in a minute. Let's start with some tech, shall we? I wanted to show the DJI wireless mic. So I try to film as much content as I can for IG and the challenge that I was encountering was the fact along with the IG lives I do for Stretch It app was the iPhone mic situation where the mic on the iPhone is atrocious and when I was away from my phone there was a lot of background noise going on and also so when I was filming stories or maybe filming a reel, the audio wasn't great. So I first bought the Rode wireless mic system and the associate at BNH very kind and helpful in helping me to decide which mic to get. When I got that thing, it didn't want to turn on. It didn't want to turn off. I bought a dud. It was a complete and utter dud. And because it was so glitchy and unpredictable, there were times where I was starting a live and the mic will not turn on. And when it did turn on, it didn't want to turn off. I was holding down the button. I was like looking on Reddit and, and any online help I could get in trying to figure out why was this mic give me problems. So the videographer, Nick, who films the content for Stretch It app suggested that I look into the DJI wireless mic. And this has been a godsend. I'm not sure technology wise, which one is better, but man, this has been working consistently from when I opened the box till now. It has the transmitter that has a attachment for either a USB or USB-C. I forgot. Basically, it's designed for Apple gadgets, and I believe there's one that's designed for Android, and you have the wireless mic here. It's just easy. It comes with this to-go case, and you have the attachments here. You got the windscreen. You got the, the chargers, and I've been having a blast now filming content regularly and much easier on the iPhone when I don't have to bring my huge camera or even my smaller Sony camera. I could just use my iPhone to film what have you and the audio be much better. And it attaches here too. I think there might be a lavalier accessory for this. I'm not entirely sure, but holding this and attaching it has been working out well. I like to still use my Samsung mic for my Zoom classes. This might be a little low because of how it's attached here, but if you have any suggestions down below, I'll be happy to take them. Nevertheless, however, in terms of making it more seamless in using my iPhone to film content, not only for IG, but maybe for YouTube shorts because the audio is better and the setup is quicker quick and easy with the DJI wireless mic. It was worth mentioning in the favorites because it's a favorite. Going into gadget number two, I filmed with this hair dryer back in January when Pattern Beauty reached out to partner with me in filming the sponsored video using showing their new hair dryer. I've been using this hair dryer a lot for the summertime and I'll tell you why. I do have the Dyson. She's over there. And people often compared the Pattern Beauty hair dryer to the Dyson because in the curly world, the Dyson hair dryer is like the holy grail hair dryer. Everyone swears by it, everyone uses it, but it's like $500. And with the Pattern dryer, I feel it's a lot more practical. And I bring this to Bay's house with me and you're like, why are you using a hair dryer? Okay, it's been so humid out. The last few days were okay, but the majority of July, not a favorite. Humidity was high and I wet this portion of my hair. The back is braided and I try to get this part super curly using the mousse. And because it is so humid, it takes forever to dry. And if I relied on air drying alone, my hair would just like not dry, it'll be sticky, it'll be a mess. So I do use the pattern dryer to accelerate the process. And the reason why I use this over the Dyson is because the Dyson, even at its lowest setting, is quite hot. And I feel I don't need that much heat, that high of a temperature, just to dry a small portion of my hair. And the first temperature setting here, there are three, is just enough for what I need because I try to let it air dry a little bit. I have my uh, floor fan you don't see is off camera. That is 
favorite. One one hundred percent. A little bit for my fan to help with the drying, and then I hit it with the pattern dryer to get that nice crisp curl. You know what I'm saying? With the diffuser attachment, and there are several more attachments with the dryer. That was one of the standout features when this product released. They had the white tooth comb attachment and the shower brush attachment, and I do like that sometimes because I don't know if you've encountered this problem with your hair, but when it's so humid and it gets like a little shrunken. I do use the wide tooth comb attachment just to like help detangle, let the heat kind of help work through the hair so it's easier to braid or you could do a dry twist out, which I did when I first used the dryer. So yeah, I just think it's fantastic. I love the color, I love the weight of it. It's just what I needed for this season. And in terms of, you know, helping my hair dry a little bit without too much heat. You know what I'm saying? And even when I do wash and goes, I'll sit in front of my fan just to help the hair get dry to around 70% and then I'll finish it off with a pattern dryer to get a little more fluff and definition. Deodorant. I had mentioned that I went into uh, the natural deodorant category as I was battling eczema under around my armpits and the antiperspirants that I were using were just far too drying. I use the Primarily Pure. I also use this one here. Where is it? I found this brand on Amazon each and every. It's okay. The thing is because it's so slick that it doesn't, it doesn't help to, well, no natural deodorants are meant to keep your armpits from sweating. It's really just to knock off the smell. But because this was so emollient, it accelerated the sweating process and just made my armpits like too moisturized, which wasn't great because the minute I put this on and went outside, I would, I would just see the deodorant <laughs> down my arm. I'm like, that's not gonna work. Before I tried each and every, I was using the crystal stick. And this by far is the most successful out of all the natural deodorant thingies that I've tried because it's just salt. You wet the salt part of the stick, rub, rinse. I like to let this air dry before capping it. And it basically takes care of the order. It doesn't stop sweating and I'm fine with that. And consistently, you know, anytime I sweat here, although there are times when I start to sweat, I, I smell, I'm like, wait a minute, the salt's not working. But as I continue to sweat, the order disappears. I don't know quite how that works. If you're using anything salt-ish like this, let me know what your experience has been. It's been fine for the meantime. And I, again, out of all the natural deodorants that I use, this has been the best and most consistent. Again, I don't mind sweating in my armpits and it doesn't aggravate my eczema. So it's a keeper. Brief makeup mentions. I don't know if you already noticed what's on my eyes. But without a doubt, July's pick is the Isamea Industrial 2 Eyeshadow Palette or 2.0, excuse me. Extraordinary piece, my goodness. I cannot stop using this palette. It is all metallic, iridescent, uh, dual chromes, finishes, pearl finishes. And the amount of freedom and experimentation this palette encourages amazing. I'm putting iridescent textures through my crease. I'm just slapping on all types of things on the eyes and it all works out. And I appreciate that approach where you don't have to worry about mattes and like typical ways of wearing eyeshadow. Industrial 2.0 truly challenges, I think, what one thinks of eyeshadow in terms of how textures should be layered and all that stuff. This is extraordinary. And I haven't decided yet if I love this more than the first industrial palette because that one is a whole vibe, a lot more grungier and darker in terms of the, the colors and the textures there. This is a lot softer, dare I say, a little more whimsical but there's some grunge, you know? I feel this has its own version of grunge, definitely more iridescent in that respect. But the textures in here, the formula overall, top to bottom, so much fun to use. And I actually forgot, I'm placing mercury here on the center of the lid, and it just provides this glass water-like effect on the eyes alongside Aloy. These two here are like your water, wet-like toppers from the palette. And the textures are beautifully thin, but have lovely impact, easy to use, and just free-flowing. It's just, it's so fluid, fantastic. 
a must have, happy that I bought it. Also happy that I spent time with it before I filmed my review because I had explained this in the original video, but I was at Maddie's, didn't have my equipment, but didn't stress. I just brought my camera, didn't worry about the audio and filmed as many looks as I could using Industrial 2.0. And during that time, I became well acquainted with the palette just learned more about it and didn't have any expectations. I dove straight in, loved all the looks I created and what I have been continuing to create after I filmed the review for it, it's been wonderful. And I cannot wait to see what else Izumiya has in store. I didn't get her Wildstar palette. That one's still on deck. I don't know if it's even still available. Maybe it's because of how it's designed or something about it. it hasn't clicked with me yet, but the industrial series, I'm like all for, sign me up. So let me know what your experience has been. I'm sure you've already mentioned uh, your feedback in this Maya video, but if you want to slap on some more comments down below about this guy, I'll see you down there. And last makeup mention is the House Labs Monster Crayon in Maple Matte. What an incredible shade. Peachy brown, peachy brown. I truly appreciate a more matte formula delivered in a chunky pencil form. This just makes it easier to be more precise in the application. You can stay within the lines or you could blot it out for a more feathered look if you desire. And if you're wondering about the fact with in regards to Lisa's velvet, velveteens, velveteens, I listen, I watched the video twice. I'm on the fence. I didn't pull the trigger yet. I'm thinking about getting fawn and dragon. The reason I haven't pulled the trigger yet is because I haven't been wearing a ton of lip products over the summer. I have the Monster Crayon. I do love what it's doing. I love the look. Don't know, however, if Fawn's gonna give me something similar or a fair. Based on the swatches that I saw, I, I, prefer, I prefer this color. So I don't know. Fawn looks a little peachy, which I'm unsure of how it will translate on my skin tone and in that liquid formula. Dragon, however, dragon, I feel is a must. That orange red or just more like that muted, earthy orange red in the velveteen formula, please. And blush. Blush might, blush might replace fawn. I might just get blush and dragon. What are you thinking, friends, of the shades? If you're getting the Velveteens, have you already purchased one or a few? Have you been liking them? Let me know because I'm I'm like okay with holding off for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in a rush. I'm really happy with the lip products that I have thus far. I've been using Lisa's Lip Embrace in both Dancing Rose and sorcery those are those have been go-to's as well for the season so i'm okay for now and holding on the velveteens but the monster crayon from house labs i think is exceptional although it's matte creamy on the application doesn't feel tight on the lips quite comfortable actually and again the chunkier pencil format makes it easier to apply where if i don't have a mirror i could just feel out the outline of my lip and be successful in applying without the mess brushes you know <laughs> i just received this set from sony g there's a mixture of the different brushes from her a uh, different series but shout out to the fundamental face series fam i have a video dedicated to the fundamental face series that launched on the 18th Beautylish and Sonigi were so kind in sending me the entire set. My goodness. When it comes to Sonigi, she does not miss in terms of the intention, the thoughtfulness behind her designs. And now her collection has just been enormously successful from her face pro to her sky face series to the little replacement she did with fusion sheer buffer replacing uh the base one and soft buffer complementing face one so there were a lot of beautiful additions and reiterations for the fundamental face series and i had to include it in this video because i i just use sonia brushes non-stop and i have so many right but it's one of those things where I just see it and I just take it. <laughs> Cause if I want to apply this makeup on fast, okay, not think about it and it just be wham, bam, look how beautiful. I look so energy all the way. 
okay? I cannot wait to see what she has in store for her Fundamental Eye series, where looking back at the original Fundamental Eye shapes, it'll be interesting to see what she keeps or what she decides to redesign because it's so interesting going into Sonia's head and she shares the process on her blog, sweetmakeuptentatious.com, so you could get better insight as to why she decides on the brush designs that she does and going through the different products that they work well with and all that stuff, the different tasks that they excel at. So yes, all of that. I would like to end this video. I know, you're like, really, that's it? I'm telling you. One of my close friend members, KB. Hi, KB. She was nice to send it to my PO box, which is now uh, active, by the way. My apologies if you sent me anything. I failed to re-up it, and of course, all the packages were turned away, but now it's back. She sent me Skin Sobering. When I read the title, I was like, oh, interesting. 99% of products age and harm your skin. Wow. I didn't read it right away because it takes me a while to get into the book thing. I know, shame on you. On July 11th, after I did all my skincare, I slapped on all my favorite products for the nighttime routine, I read a few passages. I read the intro and a few passages thereafter. And I was like, okay, skincare is ruining our skin? You mean everything that I believed and have done up until now is a lie? My entire skincare world was crumbling, crumbling in front of my eyes. And the most profound thing through this entire transition, okay? On the next day, the morning of, I remember specifically July 12th, I was packing for Maddie's that morning and remembered what I read the night prior. And I was like, oh, I just need water to wash my face. Okay, brushed my teeth and I was out. Looking back, I cannot believe how easy it was for me to just drop it cold turkey. Despite how long I've used skincare, despite how many videos I dedicated to skincare explaining the technicalities of it, like I was an expert, shame on me, I was not. I just decided to try it. Sure, I had questions about it, about how my skin would react. Is water truly enough? to clean my face. What will happen if I stop using these products? Yeah, on and on and on. But there was a calmness and serenity about my choice. I wasn't freaking out. I wasn't panicking. I just accepted the notion that this could be something that I don't need skincare going forward. I don't need to use fancy essences, serums, moisturizers, vitamin C serums anymore. I don't have to continue buying new skincare, worrying about packing it, having a huge bag take up space in my luggage. Now that space can be replaced with, I don't know, my rings or something, more clothes, something that I could use as practical. If I ever travel now, I haven't been traveling much, but when I do, don't gotta worry about them liquids anymore. Less stress there. I won't go into the details. I encourage you to read the book if you have some interest in that. But the overall notion is that our skin is an excretory organ. It is designed to eliminate. So the concept of products delivering so-called nutrients to our skin is silly because nothing's getting in since the skin is designed to kick out. And also applying the skincare products is interfering with the skin's natural processes of producing its own NMF. That's their natural moisturizing factor. It also interferes with the exfoliation signaling, where if you apply something that is exfoliating, it tells the skin, oh, you don't have to exfoliate when it actually kind of does. So that's all screwed up. And basically skincare is like colorless makeup, just how you would never go to bed with your makeup on. You truly shouldn't with skincare. So what has been my routine? Well, I do use skincare when applying makeup because that is my skin prep, my primer, if you will. And if I do apply makeup that's oil-based or it's just not powder, <laughs> I do use Grandma's Lye Soap for sensitive skin. And you're like, Alicia, how dare you? Because all this time, right, we were told that soap is a huge no. 
over drying too stripping your skin's gonna overproduce the oils and la 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 i don't buy it anymore i'm like fine whatever and shout out to kb she actually sent me some soap but i bought some when i was at maddie's since i needed it at the time so i'm gonna have a nice uh collection of lye soap because i'm going to continue using this going forward not only on my face but on the body i'll get to the body in a minute by the way so on days like this where i have makeup on i'll use water there's a cupping method that is outlined in the book where you use the water to kind of break down the the outermost layers of what you applied that day and then you use the soap and the suction motion and the suds will lift that makeup and excess dirt off your skin and you don't apply anything afterwards if your skin is super dry you use Vaseline. For my body, I do use the soap for my armpits because the sweat glands here and between your legs do excrete fatty acids that produce the order so I use the soap to kind of break down whatever uh, build up in those spaces but I use water for the rest of my body I don't use any soap no more washcloths I don't I haven't applied moisturizer on my body in the last week and my eczema has not flared up my armpit eczema has not been itching my patch here that came back has been cool the ones that are having a little more time healing are the patches on my shins those are the worst and i assume that will take the longest to heal so i'm fine with that and my skin is a little drier for sure it doesn't feel like that smooth silkiness because that smooth silkiness was just <laughs> A kind of fake feeling that we got from our products and got used to and addicted to and again it's not actually enhancing our skin texture or it is but it should be taken off because it's not great for our skin's uh, engineering to be battled by itself and I'm getting a little more breakouts here because I think now that the skin is able to go on its own timeline of eliminating and excreting that is pushing out all the junk is probably have been wanting to for quite some time and now it's you know back to its regularly scheduled programming is able to do so without any interruptions and it's cool i'm not freaking out i'm just have to keep my fingers on my face like i got a little thing here and my forehead is hard to see i got more blackheads and whatever but you know what I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm excited for the experiment to see what it holds for the future. And you're like, but what about SPF? The book recommends SPF for sure if you're in direct line of the sun. But you know what? It also recommended, it also recommended that the best line of defense you have against the sun is just wearing a UPF treated hat upf treated clothes to physically physically block out the sun because as you know spf application can be tricky if you're applying enough evenly or you're letting it set so it creates that film on your face and quite frankly you know during a long day i rather just slap on my hat and know that i will be shielded all right this is from san diego hat company and has been my first line of defense against the sun and i believe it was two years ago where they were so kind in sending me not only the wide brim hat that you just saw but several other styles that's what i wear for sun protection you know i don't stress about it i'll put the spf on if i'm not wearing my hat or just for reinforcement but i make sure i take it off at the end of the day and i don't apply anything afterwards and that's why i've been applying less makeup because yes soap can be drying not recommended that you use it every day which is why i'm trying to like schedule my filming to just a few days a week instead of like frequently so i could give my skin a moment to just be cleansed with water and not have to rely on the soap each and every time i would love to skin sober up for 30 days so i'm only a week in and I will take photos of my progress. You know, this is this is exciting to me. I'm not panicking yet, but I don't have to because I love to learn. I'm curious. If it doesn't work out, I'll just go back to using my skincare, right? But if it does, then I'm free. I don't have to buy any more of this stuff. I don't have to worry about moisturizing my body. I could just let my skin do its thing and knowing that I don't have to interfere with its own capabilities to be soft, to exfoliate, to protect 
my vessel to learn more about it and to trust in its ability to be the ultimate shield is exciting to me. So I will keep you updated, friends. Let me know if you read Skin Sobering or learned about it in some way, what your experience has been, because I don't know if this same approach applies to nails and hair. I don't think it does because nails and hair are dead, so they probably need a little more moisture but let me know what you think down below what you have encountered if you were doing skin sobering and you were like laying off the products for nails and hair as well i still oil my cuticles every day and i'll put like vaseline on my hands and also on the bottoms of my feet so you know that's been working out well uh we'll see how it goes <laughs> 30 days out. But that is it. That is uh, my July favorites because June was a big month for makeup. I bought a lot of stuff and I was gifted many items as well. So I just wanted to lay low this month and August too. I'm not sure what's coming out product wise. I don't know if I'm getting the Lisa Velveteens. I don't know what eyeshadow palette is releasing. Oh, of course, Mothership 11. Yeah, I'll probably be getting that. I already shared my thoughts on it in Izamea's video, and I probably will share my thoughts on it in my membership close friends video during the live. So it is a part of the membership, but if you want to be a part of it, I'll make sure to leave that membership link down below. With that said, friends, I'll see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel and until then i will see you on here again with another review tutorial <laughs> monthly favorites skin sobering update or another brush video more to come on that take care and i'll see you again soon